It's seven minutes past five. And have you ever had any experience of you or someone in your family having a cardiac arrest? How was it? when it came to being admitted to hospital. Figures obtained using the Freedom of Information Act showed there were a wide variation between the best and worst performing hospitals in the West Midlands when receiving patients alive following a cardiac arrest. The former ambulance chief for Staffordshire, Roger Thane, obtained the figures and says the standards of care vary widely. A third of people who arrive at hospital successfully resuscitated and have maintained that to hospital, about a third should survive on, on average. In the best hospitals, that could be as high as 50%. What we found is that survivors from the hospitals in, in the West Midlands was uh, over 50% in the best case and as low as 10, 11% in the worst case. Information obtained under the Freedom of Information Act by Roger showed that only 15% of patients with a heartbeat restored following a cardiac arrest survived at George Eliot Hospital. Warwick Hospital, South Warwick F uh, Foundation Trust had 22% and University Hospital in Coventry came in much better with 47%. This compared to above 50% at the best performing trusts in the region. Roger Thane says more should be done. We can improve the ambulance service to the best and we can improve the hospital treatment to the best. Then there could be 300 lives a year saved in the West Midlands alone. And taking that across England, that would be about 3,000 lives. Well, let's get some more reaction to this. Uh, Trudy Loba Loban is from the Arrhythmia Alliance. Uh, good afternoon, Trudy. Good afternoon. Uh, Roger Thane is saying more needs to be done. Is he right? Absolutely. Yep, yeah, we need to get more information, awareness, education. Uh, the public needs to be more aware of symptoms, knowing their pulse. But then also when they're admitted to a &E or through you know, their uh, GP, ensure that they're referred to the right specialist. Is that what the problem is? They're going to the wrong people? Um, not necessarily. It might be that they're not being referred at all or their symptoms are not being identified. And then within the hospital, uh, they want to see a heart rhythm specialist, an electrophysiologist. When the good hospital's doing over 50%, 15% is a bit of a rubbish figure, isn't it? And there's 100,000 sudden cardiac deaths each year in the UK. 80% of these could be avoided if diagnosed and treated appropriately. The treatment options exist. Uh, it's just getting the patients to the right people. Is it, the pro is it just a, a systemic problem in the NHS? Um, it, in areas. I mean, if, if you suffer a sudden cardiac arrest out of hospital in London, you have a far, far greater chance of surviving, as we saw with Fabrice Mwamba, than if you were in Coventry and Warwickshire. And what we've got to make sure is that it's not a postcode lottery. Wherever you are, you receive the same treatment and importantly is to have external defibrillators available. And through heartsandgoals.org, that's what we're doing, making sure more external defibrillators are available to the public so that uh, patients are saved at steam, but then to ensure when they reach their local hospital, services exist to go on to treat them long term. There are a lot of factors in dealing with this, from the ambulance service through the NHS, the doctors. Which part of the system needs the most attention? Oh, that's a very good question. <laughs> uh, the whole care pathway, at the beginning it needs better awareness and education, but then it, to ensure that the services are fully furnished in the hospitals. You know, if you live near a teaching hospital, then you're going to get the expert uh, centres. But if you're near a, a local hospital, it's less likely. And we need to make sure that these services are sent out to all hospitals, irrespective of where you live. How broken is it? Uh, it has improved. I'm trying to be positive. It has improved, especially since the National Service Framework on Sudden Cardiac Death and Arrhythmias, Heart Rhythm Problems, was published in 2005. Just a couple of weeks ago, the cardiovascular outcome strategy has been published, and that's looking to improve services. What we've got to do now at the Arrhythmia Alliance is ensure that this um, outcome strategy is implemented and services are improved. So, you know, bringing this to the news is fantastic. More people becoming aware. More people should go and 
learn how to take their pulse and be more aware of their heart rhythm. And how do we do that? Go to knowyourpulse.org. Knowyourpulse.org. Yeah. yeah. Four easy stats on how to take your pulse. So Roger Moore will take you through those steps with a video. Or contact us on 01789450. 787 and we can send literature and it's so easy and we also host events around the county teaching people to know their pulse you don't need any equipment um it's easier than taking your blood pressure these days were you shocked at these figures the, the like in particular no. the variety going going from 15 percent to 50 percent i wasn't shocked because we had uh, we were aware of it and we were we've been trying to raise greater awareness um, and also, it's, you know, it's not just in the Coventry and Warwickshire area, it's across the country. And it's important that we identify where good practice and help those to attain that, those targets. Now these figures are out there. Is that good news then? Because they, they were obtained under freedom of information. Will that help your case? Then? Absolutely. I think these figures should be made available and, and make the public aware and demand better services. That's you know, true. We, we should, it's a national health service. We should all expect the same availability to specialists and treatments, irrespective of where we live. And so, you know, with more of this information uh, becoming publicly aware, then it's important and it can certainly help cause. Trudy Loban from Arrhythmia Alliance. Thanks for your time this evening. Thank you.